All right guys, so right now we're gonna do a short little talk about just basic nostril piercing information and aftercare, okay? So for the most part, when I pierce a nostril, I'm usually, usually going to use a nostril screw to start off with, okay? Nostril screw just being the type of jewelry, it's basically a post with a little corkscrew into it. That's gonna be pretty much your most common type of jewelry you're gonna start a nostril piercing off with. Nostril screw jewelry um, in the beginning is usually bent a little bit loose to compensate for any swelling or healing, um, draining, discharge, all that fun stuff. Now, because it's bent a little bit loose, it might wanna move around a bit on you in the beginning. That's totally normal. Just know that in around a month, go back into the shop where you got it pierced and they should be able to take it out, rebend it, make it a little bit more snug and tight and reinsert it back into the piercing. But just know everybody has to start off loose right in the beginning. You are gonna get some swelling and that swelling usually happens during the first like week or two. Um, and then you wanna give another week or two after that just kind of heal a little bit more before you start taking it out to rebend it or, or, or switch it. Now, I do know a lot of girls come in or even guys that matter and they wanna start with a ring. Some piercers do feel pretty comfortable about starting with a ring, but I usually recommend against starting with rings and mostly because a lot of people that wanna start with a ring, they want the smallest, tightest, most fitted hoop possible. Well, the problem with that is it doesn't usually exactly give you the most um, room for swelling. That's gonna occur during that initial healing stages, okay? So what'll happen is your nose just swells and the ring starts cutting into your nose. It could lead to hypertrophic scarring or otherwise known as keloiding um, or other problems like that. At least with the stud or the nostril screw, you can bend it really loose to allow for that swelling and, and that drain and discharge and then it no longer becomes an issue. Some people, they'll start you with a ring that's a little bit looser, actually a lot looser to compensate for that, but it's not usually the most flattering look and uh, it's probably not the look you're gonna be wanting or, or going for. So in that case, start with a little uh, nostril screw or, or a stud and that way it can look really cute and, and small and dainty on the outside if that's the look you're going for. And then in a month, you can downsize it, get it tightened up a little bit if necessary. And then usually a month and a half to two months, um, that's right around when you can start switching it and, and putting in a ring or, or more snug fitted ring if, if that's the look you want too. Okay guys? Now, as far as aftercare goes, two to three months to heal this guy, okay? So two to three months, like don't touch it, don't play with it. Definitely don't spin it and rotate it, like none of that stuff. For the most part, you leave it alone and let it heal. Now, you have a scab in there, so if you're constantly moving around, it's just like picking out a scab and you're just gonna get um, a lot more scar tissue and more prone to infection and other uh, problems such as those, okay? There is an exception to that rule. Now, like I was saying earlier, because I bend the nostril screw a little bit loose to allow room for the swelling and the healing and stuff like that, it might move around a little bit on the inside. And sometimes you get that little hook just kind of hanging out of your nose and it's not really the most flattering look ever. That would be the only time where, you know, wash your hands really, really well with soap and water and then just gently push it back up into your nose. If that thing is moving around all the time, you gotta deal with it the first few weeks, you know, first three or four weeks um, while it's healing or getting through that swelling phase. And then, like I said earlier, three to four weeks, go back into a shop, have them tighten it up and that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Now, if it never moves and it, and it stays up totally fine with the loose bend, you can totally wear it like that, no problem. Plenty of people um, prefer their nostril jewelry loose. You know, you're just not gonna know which one you like until you wear it and get into, get into um, the thick of it and, and kind of get the feel of it and then you kind of, you know, you just get to decide for yourself. The next thing, I guess jumping up to after, or on to aftercare, once again, two to three months to heal. Um, during that entire healing period, never put hydrogen peroxide or alcohol or neosporin or Bactine, even antibacterial soap, all that stuff you wanna avoid. Um, now, face wash, stuff like that. You can lightly wash your face, wash around it. You're just not trying to get that soap in the hole, okay? Um, but you can definitely keep your face and, and around the piercing uh, clean and free of dead skin, debris, buildup, stuff like that. The one thing you definitely wanna make sure you are cleaning with is salt water. And you wanna be doing a salt water soak once or twice a day. Now, salt water soaks, really, really simple. I know I've gone over, over them before in a million other videos, but just to reiterate, Go to the grocery store, get a gallon of distilled water, which distilled water is like in the drinking water section, pretty easy to find. Then go to the salt section, get non-iodized or all natural sea salts, okay? Also really, really cheap and easy to find. And then from there, once you have both those items, when you get home, it's four teaspoons of the salt to the one gallon of water, all right? Shake that up, that'll give you a big jug to kind of keep around the house. And once or twice a day, you're gonna take a shot glass or a coffee cup. Remember to always use glass or porcelain, never paper or plastic. Paper or plastic just tend to contaminate your solution, especially when you heat it up in the microwave, okay? But take your shot glass or your coffee cup, fill it up with the salt water solution, microwave for a few seconds, just barely, so just barely body temperature. You want it like lukewarm, you know, body temp. And take it out of the microwave, 
test it with your finger, make sure it's not too hot. Lean forward, dump your nose in there, let it soak for a few minutes. Actually, let it soak for seven to 15 minutes, not a few, but seven to 15 minutes, let it soak. And then when you're done, just kind of take some fresh water, rinse it off, and, um, and you're good to go. Just to add to the what not to do list, never clean it with like Q-tips or cotton balls or don't wipe around it with Q-tips or cotton balls. The fibers tend to get lodged in the piercing or wrapped around the jewelry and cause a lot of problems. And then last thing, no swimming, oceans, pools, lakes, jacuzzi, stuff like that. Totally trying to avoid um, public bodies of water. There's a lot of bacteria and dirt in there and it can easily infect or, or cause problems with your piercing. Yeah, and that's pretty much so it. Basic nostril piercing info, nostril piercing 101. Thanks guys.